Well, here we are, folks, week number 33 on our Chronological Bible in a Year reading challenge, watching the big Bible story unfold before us. And this week, a very, very significant thing takes place with Jerusalem falling to the mighty Babylonian Empire and King Nebuchadnezzar, or if you look at his name carefully, Nebuchadnezzar. There you go. See, my name is in the Bible. We're going to be reading Jeremiah this week, finishing off 2 Kings and Chronicles, which talk about the city's demise and also throwing in a few Psalms in there, which lament Jerusalem's destruction. So a bit of a depressing week of readings coming up this week. But until then, sit back, relax and enjoy today's tutorial. Well, last week we started Jeremiah, we also read the book of Zephaniah, both of whom prophesy the destruction of Jerusalem to the empire in the north, Babylon, the guys who have taken over that area of the world from Assyria in recent years. And this week, we see that destruction take place, all right? It has finally come, both in the narrative of Jeremiah and also Kings and Chronicles, which we are finishing this week. Congratulations. We see the fall of Jerusalem to King Nebuchadnezzar, or if you look at his name closely, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, keep your eye out for that. For King Nebuchadnezzar uh, of the Babylonians, who basically lays siege to the city for two and a half years. Some of its people starved to death over that time. It's a horrific uh, siege against the city. Uh, and then his armies come in, burn the city to the ground, the temple, a lot of the significant buildings. They plunder and loot. They kill a whole bunch of people and break down the city walls. Jerusalem has fallen just as the prophets have predicted. You're going to be reading about that this week. Uh, basically, we read the end of the book of Kings, which as we've seen for the last few weeks, tells the story very, very matter of fact. And so Kings just ends um, with God's people in exile in Babylon, and it ends with uh, and King Nebuchadnezzar's son, who takes over and succeeds him up there in Babylon. And that's it. Kings just ends. That's it. All right, done. Congratulations, you finished Kings. Chronicles, on the other hand, as we've said before, is a different book. It's written well after Kings, okay, and so it has a great sense of hope to it. And so Chronicles actually finishes talking about the exiles in Jerusalem, but laying claim to the promise of Jeremiah that that exile will only last seven years. In fact, right at the end of Chronicles, he fast forwards 70 years to the reign of Cyrus when he releases God's people from exile and basically starts the book of Ezra. Okay, so this sort of shows us that the same person that edited or collated Chronicles is the same person that wrote Ezra. They are two books that seamlessly go one into the other. So Chronicles tells the same story of destruction, but also has those hints of hope because it is writing to an audience that is uh, pointing them towards the direction of restoration that is about to take place. All right. Jeremiah, of course, we're reading at the same time. We've got 18 chapters of Jeremiah this week. Tells the same story, the destruction of Jerusalem, but with a lot more detail. All right. Remember, Jeremiah is right there in the city when it is being conquered. In fact, he's not only right there in the city, he's right there in the palace of the king. So he is right there in the thick of it. So he gives us a lot of details that Kings and Chronicles doesn't. And what we find out from Jeremiah is that after the conquest of Jerusalem, Jeremiah gets a choice. The king of Babylon shows him favor and says, mate, do you want to come to Babylon with me and I'll take care of you? Or do you want to stay here in your homeland with all the poor people that I'm going to be leaving behind? And I'll set a governor over them and you can stay here. And Jeremiah, well, actually, I won't jump ahead because that's in next week's readings. All right. But anyway, Jeremiah tells a similar story. And we're also going to read a couple of Psalms this week, Psalm 74 and 79, which lament the destruction of God's city and God's temple and cry out for mercy for God to extend mercy toward the remnant. All right. This week, I want to draw your attention to a few things just regarding the book of Jeremiah. Number one, pay attention to the time statements of his prophecies. All right. Every now and again, it will start a new chapter and it will begin by saying in the year that so and so was king. Now, the reason you need to pay attention to that is because Jeremiah is not laid out chronologically. 
All right, up to what we read last week to all about chapter 22. It, it reads pretty well in a straight linear line. But from this week, he jumps back and forth in different time periods. And you're going to get very confused if you don't pay attention to that. OK, remember last week I said that one of Jeremiah's emphases in his prophecies was saying to Jerusalem, listen, that's it. God has made up his mind. You are definitely going to be destroyed, even to the point of God saying, Jeremiah, don't bother praying for them because I will not relent, even if they repent. Repent, I will not relent. Well, this week, Jeremiah says the exact opposite. He prophesies and he says, look, if you repent, God will relent. Now, you're going to see that as being contradictory if you don't pay attention to the timeline. All right. He is going back in history when those things are being said. But what we read last week, God had made up his mind. So things aren't contradictory. It's just that it's not laid out chronologically. You need to pay attention to that. So I recommend to you yet again. Have that list of the kings that you printed out in the order of the kings, and that'll help you see this week where at which point in history Jeremiah is prophesying and writing. OK, Jeremiah is not written chronologically. And I warned you of that at that, at that special video I did talking about how to read the prophets. OK, one of the points I made there is that the prophets are messy. All right. They are messy. And his book is not laid out chronologically. All right. With that, you'll also notice this week that some of his prophecies are repeated. You're going to come across some statements and you go, gee, I'm pretty sure I've read this before. OK, yes, you have. It's because, again, he's going back in time and repeating certain prophecies and retelling the story in another context for another purpose. So just be aware of that you are going to read some things that you think are repeated. That is true. You're also going to see again this week, number three, Jeremiah's emphasis on the heart. It's going to come out again and again. I really want you to pay attention to that. His focus on the heart. At the end of the day, as I often say, the heart of the issue is an issue of the heart. The heart of the issue is an issue of the heart. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, really brings that out. Oh, the rain's coming in. OK, I also want you to notice this week that he seems to be constantly challenged. Jeremiah, he didn't have a very easy road. He was constantly challenged by false prophets, constantly persecuted, arrested a number of times, even thrown into a cistern, OK, like Joseph in the book of Genesis, was thrown into a well by his brother. Guess what? The same thing happens to Jeremiah. That motif is repeated here with this prophet. OK, and he's often faced with opposition. Yet Jeremiah always proves to be right. OK, he's not only the weeping prophet, he's also the I told you so prophet. OK, but he constantly faces opposition. And lastly, I want you to, just to take notice, as always with the prophets, while he is mostly a prophet of doom and gloom, you have broken God's covenant, the covenant God gave with Moses. And as God promised, if you break my covenant, I will curse you. It is a prophet of doom and gloom. But there is always hope in the prophets. And Jeremiah, especially this week, has a lot of hope that comes forward. All right. Even though Babylon is now God's servant uh, to take out Jerusalem, according to God's decree, one day, God will take Babylon out by another empire, the Persians, and God will deal with them. And when that happens, 70 years into the exile, he prophesies this will take place. A remnant will return to the promised land. In fact, not only from uh, Babylon, but uh, a remnant will return from all the surrounding nations where God's people were scattered. Keep an eye out for that this week. He promises that the kingdom, the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah will be reunited, that there will be a new king who sits on David's throne. There will always be a priest to minister before him. And all of this has to do with something called a new covenant. All right, especially this week, pay attention to Jeremiah 30, 31, 2 and 3. Easy to remember because those are the ages of Jesus when he ministered on the earth. All right, Jeremiah 30, 1, 2 and 3, where he talks all about the new covenant. Kings and priests serving a covenant I will write on their hearts that won't be like the one I gave them under Moses. My friends, <coughs> amidst all the doom and gloom, a new king and a new covenant is at some point on its way. Enjoy Jeremiah this week and finishing off Kings and Chronicles. Congratulations. I'll catch you next week uh, for some more exciting readings as we see what happens to God's people post the destruction of Jerusalem and her temple. Bless you guys. Well done for getting this far. Ciao.
That's it for today's lesson. I really hope you enjoy your readings this week. Remember, allow yourself time to read as much as you can in one sitting. Don't get lost in the detail. Just keep going and watch the Bible's big story unfold before you. Remember also to hit me up on our social media channels or website, and I'll see you next time.